Driving Theory Test for Driver Behavior and Anticipation Question 284. What should the driver do when there is a sharp dip in the road ahead? A. Move to the center of the road in order to avoid a vehicle that may be parked on the left. B. Flash your lights to warn oncoming drivers of your presence. C. Reduce your speed, keep to the left and be alert for hazards ahead. D. Increase your speed. Question 284 Answer, C. Reduce your speed, keep to the left and be alert for hazards ahead. Explanation As you approach a sharp dip in the road, you should be aware that there might be hidden dangers ahead. For example, there might be pedestrians, cyclists or other approaching traffic, or the road could be flooded in the clip. You should always read the road ahead and be prepared to react to changing traffic situations. You might need to reduce your speed and drive with extra care. Question 285. What should the driver do if they see a red warning triangle on the road? A. Stop and await instructions. B. The driver should slow down and expect a hazard up ahead. C. Avoid it, maintain speed and carry on. D. Stop at the triangle before proceeding. Question 285 Answer B. The driver should slow down and expect a hazard up ahead. Explanation Warning triangles are used to alert approaching traffic that there is a vehicle breakdown or collision ahead. When you come across a warning triangle, you should slow down and prepare to stop if necessary. Do not allow yourself to be distracted by the incident. Question 286. The driver is approaching traffic lights that they know have been green for some time. What should the driver do? A. The driver should prepare to stop in case the lights change before they reach them. B. Accelerate to clear them before they change. C. Maintain the current speed. D. Maintain the current speed and sound your horn as you approach. Question 286 Answer A. The driver should prepare to stop in case the lights change before they reach them. Explanation You should always read the road ahead and be prepared to react to changing traffic situations. Where traffic lights have been green for some time, you should be prepared to stop, as the lights are probably about to change to amber. Question 287 what should a driver do when approaching a junction normally controlled by traffic lights and the traffic lights are not lighting? A. Treat the junction as an unmarked junction and proceed cautiously while watching out for other traffic. B. Drive smartly through the junction to avoid delay. C. Stop at the junction and give way to traffic on your left. D. Switch on the hazard warning lights and drive on. Question 287 Answer A. Treat the junction as an unmarked junction and proceed cautiously while watching out for other traffic. Explanation You should always read the road ahead and be prepared to react to changing traffic situations. If the traffic lights are not working, you should approach the junction with extra care, and you should proceed only if it is safe to do so. Question 288 what should the driver do if there are cattle on the road ahead? A. Sound the horn to try get the cattle to move aside. B. The driver should reduce speed and overtake with care. C. Switch on your headlights and try to pass as quickly as possible. D. Sound the horn and overtake with care. Question 288 Answer B. The driver should reduce speed and overtake with care. Explanation. You should always read the road ahead and be prepared to react to changing traffic situations. If you meet horses or other animals on the road, you should slow down and be prepared to stop. Don't use the horn or do anything that might frighten the animals. You must stop if directed to do so by the person in charge of animals. Question 289. What should the driver do if they see horse riders on the road up ahead? A. Maintain their speed while taking extra observation of the horses and how they are controlled by the riders. B. The driver should reduce speed and allow extra clearance and pass with care. C. 
sound the horn and reduce their speed. D. Turn on your hazard warning lights and continue at normal speed. Question 289 Answer B. The driver should reduce speed and allow extra clearance and pass with care. Explanation You should always read the road ahead and be prepared to react to changing traffic situations. If you meet horses or other animals on the road, you should slow down and be prepared to stop. Don't use the horn or do anything that might frighten the animals. You must stop if directed to do so by the person in charge of animals. Question 290. What should drivers be aware of if they meet horses with riders on the road? A. Drivers should be aware that loud noises from your vehicle may frighten the horses and cause them to bolt. B. All horse riders are experienced at handling horses. C. Any loud noise from your vehicle will not frighten the horses. D. They may only pass in single file. Question 290 Answer A. Drivers should be aware that loud noises from your vehicle may frighten the horses and cause them to bolt. Explanation You must know your responsibilities towards animal traffic on the road. Horses are easily startled and any sudden activity or noises could cause the to bolt. Question 291 What should the driver do when you approach a humpbacked hill? A. The driver should reduce speed, keep to the left and be alert for hazards ahead. B. Press the clutch pedal and sound the horn as a warning. C. Maintain normal speed and road position. D. Stop at the crest of the hill. Question 291 Answer A. The driver should reduce speed, keep to the left and be alert for hazards ahead. Explanation as you approach a humpbacked bridge or hill, you should be aware that there might be hidden dangers ahead for example, overtaking traffic coming towards you. You should always read the road ahead and be prepared to react to changing traffic situations such as this. Question 292. What should the driver do if there is a large oil spill on the road? A. Maintain normal speeds in a lower gear and apply the hazard warning lights. B. Depress the clutch and brake sharply and apply the hazard warning lights. C. Try to straddle it with your wheels while maintaining normal speed. D. Reduce speed by gently applying the brakes and switch on the hazard warning lights. Question 292 Answer D. Reduce speed by gently applying the brakes and switch on the hazard warning lights. Explanation Where oil is spilt on the road. Your tires will have reduced grip, and you might be at risk if you brake sharply. If you do come across oil in the road, brake gently and switch on your hazard warning lights for a short period to alert other traffic to the hazard. Question 293. What do flashing amber beacons on an oncoming vehicle alert the driver to? A. That the oncoming traffic may be slow moving or extra wide. B. Is an emergency vehicle. C. Is broken down. D. Is fast moving. Question 293 Answer A. That the oncoming traffic may be slow moving or extra wide. Explanation Flashing amber beacons are used by recovery vehicles and vehicles carrying abnormal loads. You should be aware that these vehicles may need extra room and could conceal following traffic. When you come across such vehicles, Slow down and be prepared to stop if necessary. Question 294. What should the driver do if they meet a vehicle with flashing amber beacons? A. That the oncoming vehicle is broken down. B. That the oncoming vehicle is an emergency vehicle. C. The oncoming vehicle is fast moving. D. Slow down and be prepared to stop. Question 294 Answer D. Slow down and be prepared to stop. Explanation Flashing amber beacons are used by recovery vehicles and vehicles carrying abnormal loads. You should be aware that these vehicles may need extra room and could conceal following traffic. When you come across such vehicles, slow down and be prepared to stop if necessary. Question 295 what should the driver be aware of before crossing railway or tram lines? A. 
tire grip may be improved crossing the rails. B. The wheels may become caught in the rails. C. There may be an uneven surface and tire grip may be reduced when crossing. D. Oncoming trains. Question 295 Answer. C. There may be an uneven surface and tire grip may be reduced when crossing. Explanation. You should be aware of the impact of changes in the road surface. For example, at railway and tram crossings the uneven surface or oil deposits could reduce the grip of your tires. Slow down as you approach railway or tram crossings and increase your distance from the vehicle in front. Question 296. What should the driver be aware of when crossing road markings such as lines and directional arrows? A. The stopping distance is reduced due to improved tire grip. B. The steering control is improved. C. The stopping distance is increased due to reduced tire grip. D. The braking is improved. Question 296 Answer. C. The stopping distance is increased due to reduced tire grip. Explanation. You should be aware of the impact of changes in the road surface. For example, road markings and directional arrows can become slippery when wet. Where possible, avoid driving on road markings, and be aware of the increased risk of skidding. Question 297. There are pedestrians on the footpath ahead and there are pools of water on the road. What should you do? A. Sound the horn as a warning to the pedestrians and continue on. B. Reduce speed and try to avoid the pools of water so as not to splash the pedestrians. C. Flash the lights as a warning to the pedestrians. D. Break suddenly as you approach the pools of water. Question 297 Answer B. Reduce speed and try to avoid the pools of water so as not to splash the pedestrians. Explanation. During wet conditions, you should be aware that surface water can affect the stability of your vehicle. This is particularly so where the water lies in pools. As you drive through surface water, you should show consideration to pedestrians and cyclists and try not to splash them as you pass. Question 298. When preparing to stop the driver notices the vehicle behind is towing a trailer. What should the driver do? A. Indicate in good time and pull up gradually to allow the vehicle behind extra stopping distance. B. Use the handbrake to stop. C. Speed up temporarily to put more distance between your vehicle and the vehicle behind you. D. Stop quickly keeping a close eye on the rear view mirror. Question 298 Answer A. Indicate in good time and pull up gradually to allow the vehicle behind extra stopping distance. Explanation When you are slowing or stopping, you should be mindful of the type of vehicle that is following you. For example, if the vehicle following you is a large vehicle or one towing a trailer, you should think of indicating a little earlier than normal to allow the following vehicle enough time to react safely. Question 299. A bus ahead is moving away from a bus stop. What should the driver do? A. Drive alongside it because you have right of way. B. Slow down and allow it to move out. C. Try to get past it to avoid being delayed. D. Signal to the bus driver to let you pass. Question 299 Answer B. Slow down and allow it to move out. Explanation A driver should allow signaling buses back into the stream of traffic when they are moving out from a stop. Be careful of pedestrians getting on and off buses, particularly of children near schools. Question 300 what should a driver do on a narrow road when another vehicle is coming in the opposite direction? A. Maintain its position and expect the other vehicle to move over if necessary. B. Reduce speed and allow reasonable clearance between their vehicle and the oncoming one before proceeding. C. Expect the other driver to pull off the road. D. Drive along the middle of the road to encourage other drives to pull in. Question 300 Answer B. Reduce speed and allow reasonable clearance between their vehicle and the oncoming one before proceeding. Explanation 
you should always be prepared to react to hazards ahead. When you meet a vehicle coming against you on a narrow road, you should show consideration and slow down to an appropriate speed so that the two vehicles can pass each other safely. Question 301 When driving along and wishing to stop at a shop on the side of the street in order to make a purchase, what should a driver do? A. Continue on to a safe parking space. B. Switch on you hazard warning lights and park slightly up on the footpath. C. Continue to a point where a U-turn can be made safely and return to park on the footpath in the proper direction. D. Park on the footpath so as not to impede the free flow of traffic on the road. Question 301 Answer A. Continue on to a safe parking space. Explanation you may park where it is safe and legal to do so. Your parked vehicle must not cause a danger or obstruction to other road users. Question 302. When a driver is driving behind another vehicle that they do not intend to overtake, what should the driver do? A. Keep well back and to the center of the road. B. Keep well back to allow following traffic to overtake them. C. Drive close behind it in order to let following traffic overtake both vehicles. D. Signal to following traffic to overtake both vehicles. Question 302 Answer B. Keep well back to allow following traffic to overtake them. Explanation You should always allow sufficient distance between your vehicle and the vehicle in front. This will enable you to stop safely if necessary and it will give overtaking vehicles enough room to pull in safely to the left lane after they have passed you. Question 303. Why is tailgating, driving too close behind the vehicle in front, dangerous? A. The driver exceeds the speed limit when tailgating. B. The driver's braking system is less efficient. C. The driver prevents other vehicles from overtaking both vehicles safely. D. The vehicle will not have sufficient distance to stop safely in an emergency. Question 303 Answer. D. The vehicle will not have sufficient distance to stop safely in an emergency. Explanation. If you close to the vehicle in front and it breaks suddenly, you will not have enough time to react. For that reason you should always keep a safe distance from the vehicle in front. One way of calculating the safe distance is the two-second rule. Allow at least two seconds to elapse between the vehicle in front and your vehicle passing a fixed point such as a lamppost or signpost. Question 304. Is tailgating allowed on a motorway or dual carriageway? A. Yes, because there will be no oncoming traffic. B. Only when all traffic moves in one direction at the same speed. C. Yes, because traffic will not have to stop suddenly. D. No, because the vehicle in front may stop suddenly. Question 304 Answer. D. No, because the vehicle in front may stop suddenly. Explanation. If you close to the vehicle in front and it breaks suddenly, you will not have enough time to react. For that reason you should always keep a safe distance from the vehicle in front. One way of calculating the safe distance is the two-second rule. Allow at least two seconds to elapse between the vehicle in front and your vehicle passing a fixed point such as a lamppost or signpost. Question 305. What danger can arise during daylight when a driver enters an area which is heavily shaded by overhanging trees? A. The vehicle's engine could suddenly run cold. B. Visibility could be suddenly reduced. C. The vehicle's windscreen could fog up. D. Falling branches. Question 305 Answer. B. Visibility could be suddenly reduced. Explanation. When you enter a heavily shaded area after driving in bright sunlight, it might take a while for your eyes to adjust to the change, and you might not see a hazard immediately ahead. Question 306. What should you do when you are being overtaken by another vehicle? A. Continue at the same pace. B. Move to the right. C. Move to the left. D. Increase your speed. 
Question 306 Answer A. Continue at the same pace. Explanation When you are being overtaken by another vehicle, you should continue at the same pace but be alert increase the overtaking vehicle suddenly pulls back in front of you. Question 307 When should signals, for example, indicators, be given to other road users? A. Only when it is necessary to warn following traffic. B. Only when it is necessary to warn oncoming traffic. C. Clearly and in good time to let other road users know your intentions. D. Except where road markings indicate your direction. Question 307 Answer C. Clearly and in good time to let other road users know your intentions. Explanation Giving signals is a way of telling other road users what you intend to do. So, you should signal properly before turning off, turning right or left, changing lanes, overtaking, slowing down or stopping. Signal clearly and in good time, and keep in mind that giving a signal does not give you the right of way. Question 308 When driving into a narrow gap between oncoming traffic and vehicles parked on your left, what should a driver do? A. Edge your way forward around the parked vehicles. B. Signal to oncoming traffic to halt and move to the right and drive as normal. C. Indicate and drive on enforcing your priority. D. Indicate right, stopping if necessary, until the oncoming traffic has passed by. Question 308 Answer D. Indicate right, stopping if necessary until the oncoming traffic has passed by. Explanation: When you meet approaching traffic at a narrow gap, you should show consideration and slow down to appropriate speed so that you and the other vehicles can pass by safely. If necessary give way to other vehicles. Question 309. How does giving a late signal affect other road? A. Only oncoming traffic are affected. B. They may not have sufficient time to react. C. They always have sufficient time in which to react. D. They are not affected. Question 309 Answer B. They may not have sufficient time to react. Explanation Giving signals is a way of telling other road users what you intend to do. So, you should signal properly before turning off, turning right or left, changing lanes, overtaking, slowing down or stopping. Signal clearly and in good time, and keep in mind that giving a signal does not give you the right of way. Late signals may confuse other road users. Question 820. When a driver is driving in a line of traffic and does not intend to overtake, what should the driver do? A. Beckon to the following traffic to overtake. B. Drive close to the vehicle in front. C. Stay back and leave a gap for other drivers to overtake. D. Indicate left as a signal to the following traffic to overtake. Question 820 Answer C. Stay back and leave a gap for other drivers to overtake. Explanation You should always allow sufficient distance between your vehicle and the vehicle in front. This will enable you so stop safely if necessary and it will give overtaking vehicles enough room to pull in safely to the left after they have passed you.